Hey Tommy, happy Monday and happy Monday to all of you guys out there. Thanks for joining us for this very special Jeep episode of What Car or Truck Should I Buy? I want to do a big shout out to Dan Atkinson with his big rig. Thanks for joining us, Dan. Hello to uh, everybody else who is here. Brandon, Ryan. Oh my gosh, I got the, I got the music up. Oh, there we go. We just killed it. Hey guys, thanks for joining us. And today we're going to be talking about all Jeeps all the time. Yes, that's right. So today we are talking about the coolest Jeeps at the 2019 Easter Jeep Safari, the concepts we drove, and we're going to be answering some fun off-roading questions that you guys sent us at tfltruck.com. Yeah, Tommy and I and Nathan just got back from uh, Moab, uh, and uh, wow, that's all i got to say, Tommy. Wow, that was uh, really cool. Yeah, so this year in Moab, Utah, Jeep really pulled out all the punches with the Gladiator concept. So every year they come up with a series of these really cool custom concepts for us to drive. And this year it was all Gladiators all the time. So let's start talking about some of your favorites. Yeah, I think we'll um, just go down the line. Uh, and let's start with, uh, well, the flat bill, which is uh, a concept Gladiator for all you motocross folk out there. Um, basically, this one was Mark Allen, who's the head designer of Jeep, uh, showing that he still had some uh, desert cred by putting a Jeep on 40s, dude. Can you see that? Those are 40s. Yeah, so what he did with this Jeep essentially is he lifted it, put on some nice big tires, still has the 3.6 liter V6. It's got a really special hood on it, custom body work with a rear two bumper. They pulled off the tailgate. So the whole theme on this Jeep is to haul your motorcycles to the track, to the trail, um, really showcasing what the Gladiator can do. Hey, it's bro, it's bro rated, bro. Oh God. <laughs> yeah, he had a little. You know how you have the little trail rated sign, Tommy? Yep. Uh, Mark made this little bro rated uh, symbol that looks yeah. just like the trail yeah, rated. Here, I'll turn my hat into a flat bill. <laughs> oh no, don't break it. It's there we go. That's the look he's going no, for no, right no, there. No, 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 that's not the look. What, what's the look? The look is not. That is not the look. <laughs> That, that is the look he's going for. you got to put your ears under the hat, and this has got to be like that. Uh -huh. That is exactly the look, and no sunglasses. Uh -huh. Well, anyways, it was a nice touch. Uh, it was pretty clever. Um, let us know in the comments below if you were a bro, because we'd like to hear your opinions on the flat bill. Um, but, yeah, it's a, a Dana 60s front and rear, you know, fully built off-road rig. Yeah. You know, I, I liked this, not necessarily because it was bro-rated. Hey, we got... Uh, uh, some money. Travis, thank you very much. Really appreciate the uh, Super Chat donation. You get a TFL car or a TFL truck sticker. Send us an email at info at tflcar.com uh, and let us know what your address is and we'll put one in the mail to you. Thank you very much. You know, what, what I liked about the truck wasn't that it was bro-rated, Tommy, but that it was the first Gladiator on 40s. Yeah, it was, and it was um, a, a really extensive build. I mean, you know, the cool thing about the Gladiator and the new Rubicons is if you want to do a a really big tire you don't have to lift them 24 feet and you don't need you know a a permit with the FAA to get into them um, you just have to you know slight lift maybe um, change out the the flares a little bit and you got yourself a a, a big badass rig yeah yeah and uh, the cool thing that I liked about the gravity concept which is our next one now yep is that me and you had just watched the movie Free Solo mm -hmm. uh, right before we went out to the Easter Jeep Safari. Not because we knew that Mark was designing a Jeep based on the movie, uh, but because it's a cool movie. So the movie is about, and I forget the guy's name, right? Yeah, I don't remember his name, but it's a, it's a climbing movie about this gentleman who um, free soloed or climbed without ropes, ropes, El Capitan, which is you know one of the, the pinnacle rocks, for lack of a better word, but cliffs. Um, in the U.S. Out, out, out in California. And, and free soloing means basically there are no ropes, so if you fall, you die. Uh, and it chronicled his journey to do that. Uh, and then, of course, Jeep decided that that was going to be inspiration for Gravity, uh, which is the truck behind me. Now, did they did they credit the movie, or are they just going yeah, yeah, for... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. And on the side of the truck, they actually... It was pretty cool. They had a little climber dude yeah. on one side and a little climber gal on the other side. Because I, I just learned this, actually. Yeah. Um, free soloing... Yeah goes way beyond the movie. It's actually like a whole trend. It's yeah, a whole sure. art. So I don't know if it's like related to the movie, but it's still a pretty cool truck. Yeah, this one's definitely related to the movie. Uh, and the idea behind this concept was to have something that you can bring all of your climbing gear on. So you'll note that in the bed, uh, they've got a little rack system so you can store all your ropes and so, shoes and so helmets you know, and whatever you need. You know what's really ironic? What? Um, you don't need anything for free soloing. Well, you need shoes. 
Yeah, do you need do you need a gladiator to carry your shoes around in? Well, uh, you also need that little pack that hangs off your butt where you've got chalk so that you can get you, a good you grip. Heard it, you heard it here first, guys. You need a gladiator to hold your shoes and your chalk. <laughs> well, apparently, that's what you need to go free soloing. Uh, so, yeah, it was it was a cool truck. It had the two-inch round steel tube doors. Uh, those are, uh, you know, kind of popular right now if you want to go doorless and not be afraid of, like, you know, getting a bear <laughs> jumping in there. You've got some protection between you and the bear. And that's uh, what those doors are about. What do you think of it? Uh, I think it kind of feels like a Mopar catalog, if I'm being honest. Yeah, and that's, of course, what it is. It's a, it's a catalog to show off all the different Mopar parts. Now, three of these Jeeps were basically Mopar builds. They were built by the guys at JPP, Jeep Performance Parts, or Mopar. And three of them were built by Mark Allen. So a uh, Flat Blue was a Mark <laughs> Allen build. Gravity was a Mopar build. Okay, so Boney Chuck says, is there a space for a coffin in that thing? Yes. There yes, you go. as long as you're less than six feet, actually five feet long, because otherwise you're going to hang off the tailgate. Oh, God, it <laughs> got really dark really quick. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, we've got a great bunch of viewers and great commenters. We re re really appreciate you guys. All right, Tommy, let's move on to the M715 Five Quarter. Yep, so um, this is actually also one of Mark Allen's favorite Jeeps ever. So it's the M715, which was actually a military vehicle built by Kaiser um, throughout the, you know, the 1960s. Uh, and it was a, a really unique truck in that the grill actually sloped the other way. So usually gr gr grills may slope like this. This one actually sloped toward the front of the Jeep. Four headlights, uh, loosely based on, you know, like the design of the original Gladiator. But it was a super crude, super sturdy, but super slow and uncomfortable military purpose-built vehicle. Um, and the guys over at Jeep pretty much kept none of that, that, that heritage. Well, they kept none of the originality of the Jeep, yep. but they still kept the design. It's got a brand new bed, even though the bed looks like it could be something that, that's original, brand new bed. Um, the gauge cluster is the same, so that's pretty sim much similar, but everything else is basically custom. Hey, uh, Zach, throw me that hat over there, would you? Uh, we're going to do a giveaway right now. Uh, and by the way, if you guys are watching this live, you always know we're live because we've got the little uh, counter there, subscriber counter. But we're about to give away this 1941 Jeep hat, which actually I love. It's kind of pre-distressed. It's really cool. Uh, and so here is the trivia question. And if you're watching this after it's gone live and it's already been answered, we'll let you know so you don't have to play. But right now, you can play along with us. Um, and the question, Tommy, is first person to get this right, and you can Google it if you want. I don't care. It might not be that actually easily Googleable. Googleable. What year did the seven-slotted grill become a thing? What year officially did Jeep adopt the seven-slotted grill? Because okay, let's clarify a little bit. This is actually I didn't like how you phrased that. All right. What phrase. year was the seven-slot grill a corporate standard in Jeep? So what year did they mandate yeah, from there on on? Yeah, but they had became seven, a thing. They had seven slots before then too. But they had more. Yeah, they had nine and twenty-two, depending on which one you had. But this one year is when Jeep Corporate went to exclusively seven, seven slots in their grill. Yes. So if you can tell us the year, and you can probably start guessing, then you will get this hat as a, well as a prize. So we are officially giving away this hat. Oh, somebody got it already. Look at that. Dan Atkinson, congratulations, 1992. He's right. Congratulations, Dan. You get the hat. Are you sure? I'm positive. Yeah, I had a, I had a, a long talk with Mark Allen about it. There you go. So there you go. I think we, if we don't have your address, Dan, please send it to us at uh, uh, ask at tfltruck.com or info at TFL Car, and we'll send you that hat. So congratulations. If you guys are watching this, the hat is gone. Boy, that didn't take long. All right, um, let's go back to the... Uh, uh, sorry, sorry, that's not true. That's what Mark said. Well, 1993, they had eight slots in a Grand Cherokee. Well, Mark said 1992, so official. He's, he's, I was there with that conversation. Yeah? It's not 92. It's 92. No, it isn't. It's yeah. 97. Because starting with the TJ is when they went to all seven slots. Mark said 92. Well, I'm looking at a 93 Grand Cherokee. It's got eight slots in the grill. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Is that eight. also the year they went to the, what was it, the WJ Grand Cherokee? N no, the that one, was... The, a, one, the more rounded one. That but, was much later. But maybe it became a thing in 1992, but they didn't change it, you know what I'm saying? In, yes. In so Corporately. Yeah, yeah, but, that they didn't change it until much later than that. I, I don't, I don't think that's a very good question. I'm gonna give it to Dan. Dan, you you, you brought your truck and you get the hat, so we're gonna we're gonna um, call it 
Dan. All right. Hey, Wes Hoover, or is it Hoover? Thank you. Love all your videos, especially the Canadian content. Keep up the great work. Yeah, that's due to our man Steve up there in Canada. We're really trying to give you a lot more uh, love up in Canada. So thank you for watching from Canada, and thank you for that donation. Much appreciated, Wes. Uh, Tommy, let's go back to the 7155 quarter. Uh, you, you failed to mention the most important thing about that truck. First, Mark bought it, so he bought a used one. Yep. Mm -hmm. So that was an original one. And then what did he put under the hood? Uh, yes, yeah, so it's got a 6.2 liter supercharged V8. What did Nathan do to it right away? Uh, break it. Yeah, he broke it. What did he do? <laughs> he was like the second guy to break it. And coming back around on the uh, circuit, yeah, um, he lost power steering. The hose tore or broke off or something. And he said God. it was not easy to turn the wheel with tires that big. Ugh. Yeah. Ugh. There's our man. Yeah, so... Um, like a $2 million prototype. Yeah, it's probably not $2 million, but it's still a, well, a lot of money. It could be $2 million. So they had actually um, a, a Dynatrack Pro Rock 60 in the front and a Pro Rock 80 in the rear. Wow, yeah. So that's a massive axle. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it was cool. Uh, and the amount of detail that Mark pulled into that truck is incredible. You know, like the bed had little uh, wooden slots. Um, he used the original controls from the original truck and incorporated them into the interior. Uh, just uh, like a handmade prototype. That's why I went with two million. I think the amount of time and money that went into that must have been incredible. It's probably lost. So that was also on 40s. Yep. Um, like I, like we said, full front carbon fiber front end. Um, which obviously they didn't use in the military back in the 60s and 70s. Um, but yeah, so our next vehicle is also a throwback to, you know, the yesteryear of Jeep, and that is the Scrambler. Yeah, uh, the JT Scrambler, of course. Uh, and this one, I, interestingly, if you really wanted this, you could probably recreate this because it's a Mopar truck, right? Yep. And so all the parts that you see up there are actually available uh, to buy. Yep. Uh, and then if you could do the sticker package, you could actually build this yourself. And, of course, the Jeep truck... Uh, the JT, no, the, sorry, the J, what is it, the JT, right? Yeah. The JT uh, is more uh, of a scrambler than it is a Comanche, when you think about it, right? Because it's a Wrangler with a bed instead of mm -hmm. a Cherokee with a bed. Wait, 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 wait. It's more of a scrambler than it is a Gladiator. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and so uh, this is the original one, and scramblers are getting pretty expensive, dude. We were looking to buy one instead of the Comanche. Yeah. Uh, we just couldn't uh, find a nice one for under, like, 20K. Okay, so we're getting some interesting comments. Okay. Um, Travis Corda, 1997, I worked for the patent office. Yep. And then AKB 1998, I am on the Jeep Board of Directors. Okay. Uh-huh. You believe that? I do believe that. Not, <laughs> I don't, I'm not necessarily that, 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 that but really? think about it. You know, 1997 was when the T TJ came out, right? Yeah. That was a whole new era for Jeep. Uh. Starting with the WJ was exclusively seven slots in the grill. The later ZJs had seven slots. I'm going to go with the late 90s. All right. Because right. when they standardized you, you, the seven slots. Tommy hates to be wrong, as you can tell. Well, I just, I don't want to give misinformation and say it was 92, <laughs> because the 93 Grand Cherokee had eight slots. So All right, who well, are we calling the winner then? You know what? We'll just say the have, '90s, the entire <laughs> decade. There's an, everybody. Gets will, a will you time. agree that Mark Allen knows when they went? Yes, but I also was there when he told me specifically '97. So you think I misheard? Yes, I think you misheard. All right, it's possible. <laughs> it's possible. I'm still gonna give the hat to uh, um, Dan. So okay. All right, so we're, you're still getting the hat, Dan. Don't worry. Uh, all right, uh, so the Scrambler, once again, you can build this yourself. Did you know they had like three different names for the orange colors on, on those stickers? Um, like those wheels are pumpkin. Yeah. They're pumpkin. They're not orange. They're pumpkin colored. Aren't they pum pumpkin? Yeah, P U N. Pumpkin, yeah, yeah. Pun pumpkin orange? Pumpkin, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, what an interesting pun. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's funny. It's hey, funny. by the way, before we get to the next one, I just want to do a big shout out to our sponsor, uh, Paisley um, Grass Fed Beef Jerky. This is kind of a flat bill look. See, that's kind of, that's kind of there. Uh, we met Benjamin, who actually runs a company. Yeah. The dude used to be. A, a rodeo cowboy. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He used to be a rodeo cowboy. He's kind of the real thing. And he lives actually even farther in the middle of, um, well, I'm going to say, say very um, rural Utah, like two hours kind of west and south of Moab. Uh, and uh, he gets all the beef for the jerky from local farmers. Whoa. From a very de kind of depressed area. So he's getting this grass-fed beef, and now he's selling it as jerky, and uh, yeah, he's doing really well. So really nice kid. It was a pleasure to meet him. We had breakfast with him in Moab, uh, and um, really glad to be associated with him. Wow, that's really cool. Yeah. So back to this truck here. Um, 
You don't think that's cool. I do think that's cool. There's a lot of other stuff on this, this scrambler, right? Right, yeah. Um, it's largely like a Mopar catalog as well. You know, you've got the a lot of bits that are available through Mopar, but the one really custom bit yep. is the bed bar in the back. So you see the four lights out back, um, and this was an entirely custom-made bed bar with, you know, little tie-downs down the side. So it's uh, a really cool-looking truck now. Hey, here's a question for you. Yeah. You know, every year they do, like, six concepts, mm -hmm. and they've been doing it for at least the last ten years, as far as I know. Yeah. What happens to all those concepts? That's a lot of concepts. Well, I know, like, sometimes you'll see really old ones. Yeah. Um, so, driving around Easter Jeep Safari, and there's this one, um, I'll see if I can find the name of it, it's probably eight or nine years back, but it was also, I think, an M715 front, and at that time it was a JK that they turned into a truck, and it had a diesel in it, and I was talking to one of the engineers there, and they said that they have over, I think it was 80,000 miles on that truck. So they actually use them. Yeah, so, so that, that's one, it's one of the, probably one of the only concept vehicles ever made that's got a considerable amount of miles on it. I would think most of them would be in some warehouse in Detroit. Yeah, that's yeah. what I imagine too, yeah. but you do see them come back every now and then. All right, next is probably uh, my favorite, and that's the way out, uh, just because, uh, you know, overlanding has become huge, and this is Jeep's uh, attempt at cracking the Toyota Tacoma stranglehold on overlanding. Okay. Uh, so Mark Allen designed a really cool overlander, and I was talking to the guy actually who runs the Overland Journal. Yep. And he was really impressed because Mark used not only um, you know kind of the, the coolest kind of overlanding colors and themes that are happening right now, but also the best gear. Oh wow! So, so if you look uh, that you know the, there's two kinds of tents right there are the kind of the, the fold out and then the, there are the clamshell. And the clamshell are just much better because you just go boop. And, yeah. And, and also he used this really beautiful awning, which is also, it's like Iho or Aho or, uh, no, not Aho. But I, 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 I'm going to mispronounce it, so I'm not even going to go there, even though I just did. Um, but, yeah, so he used the best stuff, uh, and it was really cool. Yeah, um, you know, the blender may have been a little too much. He had a blender that he incorporated in, so he was kind of blending margaritas for us. So the coolest part of this truck, in my opinion, mm -hmm. isn't the, uh, the bed rack or the... Um, the, the tent is cool, but they have a 270 degree awning that folds out, yeah. and you just whips around. You the know, coolest part is the fuel. No, the coolest. Well, the, the, yeah, the fuel, the fuel canisters built into the bed are cool, but in my opinion, the best part of this entire Jeep are the wheels. I love the color match. The like steel those steelies, wheels. yeah. Yeah, I think that's a really classic um, look, and it's it's kind of something we don't see very often anymore. Yeah, and uh, I also love the fact that you know you don't see. Uh, too many uh, Wranglers with um, snorkels. It's all. It's also a brilliant color. Um, this is like gator green. Yeah. And it's um, uh, it's like kind hey, of brown green. You, like, you guys like that color? If so, it's coming. That's a, that's a color. Yeah, that's, it is. That's coming it's to coming. to the Jeep. So if you hold off on your Gladiator for about a few months, you could probably get, get it in gator green. Yeah, for sure. And the number one car or truck rather on our list mm -hmm. from the concepts mm -hmm. is the J6 two door. By yeah. far, the, the, the vehicle that they should build. You know, I'm really struggling with this one because it's just the proportions are perfect, right? It's the pickup Jeep of my dreams yeah. in the pickup color of my dreams. Uh, and basically, you know what that is? It's not a Gladiator. Yeah, so that really should be the Scrambler. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. You know, because that's the most true-to-form Scrambler, two-door, kind of longer bed. Um, and they said they had to chop up three Gladiator beds to make this one. Um, I think it's a six-and-a-half-foot bed. On, on the J6 prototype, but they have some really cool vintage lettering down the side. This is a special made color for this Jeep that throws back to the 70s as well. The interior has this cool applique across the dash that's also the super metallic uh, blue. It's just a, a really well done Jeep. Um, yeah, and um, the problem, of course, is, is there's no business case for it, right? Mm. The problem is they think that nobody would buy this thing because when you look at two-door pickup trucks, there are only a few... Are there any actually, can you buy a two-door pickup still? Yeah, Toyota makes a Tacoma on two-door, right? Nope. They don't make a two-door anymore? No, I don't think there's a two-door Tacoma. You can get the Titan in a two-door. Um, you get the Frontier. Yep. Two -door. Fr uh, a Frontier. Oh, wait, you mean, you mean like... Mid-size pickup. Are you talking about a strict single cab or are you talking about like an Axis cab? No, I'm talking about a strict two-door. Not, okay, not the yeah. Oh, I don't think there's no, a strict two-door. No, no, no. So so the Frontier isn't. Um, the the Titan is. There's a, the Silverado. No, you only mid-sized. Oh, mid-sized? Yeah. Oh, no, there's none. I don't think there are any, yeah. So it's really hard to make a case for that. By the way, Isaac is asking, when does the uh, Cheap Jeep Challenge start? Uh, soon. Yeah. Hope, we're hoping to do the first episode um, this Sunday, and we're debating whether we should put it up on TFL Truck or TFL Car. Maybe you could help us answer that. We'd really appreciate your help. The problem is the first Cheap Jeep, which was, of course, the TJ, lived on TFL Car. Yeah. Uh, and so our initial thinking was we were going to put it up on TFL Car, but then, of course, 
it's got a bed, so it's a truck, so it kind of feels like it should go up on TFL Truck. So let us know where you want to see it. Uh, we've got the first four episodes shot. Um, we actually took uh, the uh, command sheet of Moab and really had fun with it. Uh, it was an, really an eye turner. People were asking me, stopping me, giving me thumbs up. It was just a cool Jeep to have there. Yeah, really cool Jeep. Now, here's another comment. Someone said the last Tacoma was the previous generation in 13 or 14. Okay. So um, that was kind of, I think, the last single cab midsize truck, at least. Um, people say I like four-door pickup trucks. Some people say that this is a truck. And I agree. I think that this is um, a really cool-looking rig. And But I'm worried, like like you said, it's one of those trucks that people are clamoring for and then no, no one actually really buys. I'd so buy it. I would buy it, too. Um, okay, should we move on to some questions? Yeah, and then please, in the comments below, let us know where the uh, Jeep Jeep should be. People are saying TFL truck. That's what, that's what I'm kind of thinking. Uh, so we'll probably end up putting it on TFL Trucks. So if you're looking for it, head on over to TFL Truck. All right, this is a great question. It came from Sean Tom. He actually works at uh, Dana's Toledo Drive Line plant. Uh, yeah, so he says, I love how in-depth your videos are. Thank you, by the way. Thank you. Um, especially on Jail Wranglers and JT Gladiators because I work at Dana Toledo Drive Line where we make the axles for those vehicles, which is a really cool thing. So thanks for watching our videos. My criticism is that you um, only praise Rubicons and anything that doesn't have l electronic locking disc isn't worth mentioning so he goes on and talks about how you can get the dana track lock um, rear diff which is like a limited slip yep um on, on, yep. The, on the sport rubric on the sport uh, yeah and on, and on other other models and yep. and uh, wranglers as well cut the long story long story i'd like to see more focus on um, what we see on the road most not just souped up rubicons um, so he wants to see sport or sport s's with the max towing package that comes with the 410 track lock so this is actually an interesting comment now on my personal Jeep, I have a JK that has that limited slip rear diff. I think it's called the anti-spin rear diff on mine. Um, and it's, uh, you know, not lockers. It was the most aggressive ratio you could get on a JK at the time, which was a 373. And it's a great differential. Um, you know, it works pretty well off-road in combination with the brake lock differential system. The reason we push the locking diffs on, like, the Rubicons and, and stuff so much is because, as I quickly found out, um, if you want to upgrade to locking diffs, unless you do some kind of like mechanical um, locker. Like a Detroit locker yeah. or, or a G80, something if like that. If you want to do uh, an ac a locker you can actuate be via air or via ARB. Uh, yeah, electricity, it, it's just so expensive to outfit a, a Sport or a Sahara um, with a locking differential. And it really makes all the difference off-road. Yeah, so even though Rubicons are expensive, if... There's two sides of this coin, right? If you're going to take it off-road and you want to retrofit one, it's just going to be more expensive than buying it from the factory. Just so much more. Yeah. Uh, the other problem, and that's a more pragmatic one, is um, nobody buys the base sports. They're not that popular, right? Most, well, most of the Jeeps that, that people buy for some reason are the Rubicons. People love the Rubicons. I think it depends on where you are and your location. But we just talked to a, one of the larger Jeep dealers in the country. Um, and, and he was mentioning that people come in and they want the Rubicons because they're the coolest and they don't care about any of the locking diffs and they don't care about the, uh, the, they, the, the, the disconnects. They only want the Rubicon because it's the coolest. They want, they want two things. They want to know how much, uh, what's the coolest Jeep, which is always going to be the Rubicon, and of course, how much is their monthly payment. Yeah, so um, I, I appreciate you uh, mentioning the other axles and I think I would like to do some more off-roading, especially with the Gladiator with, you know... Um, those those track locks because they're cool and it's a good option you know if you know that you never want to go beyond a point where you need a locker and you know um, that you you don't you don't want a Rubicon just because it's the coolest then yeah do a Sport S with um, uh, a, a limited slip I mean it's a great value all right let's keep going uh, Jackson uh, asks can a Forester handle the trails in Moab I'm a long time watcher of almost all TFL channels on YouTube I'm living in North Carolina but some friends of mine are going over to the national parks this summer we're wondering if the Forester will be able to uh, do enough uh, on the lighter trails and more, or should we think about renting a Jeep for some uh, rental place? Uh, by the way, uh, what's her name? Barlow? Yeah, Nina Barlow. Nina Barlow does rentals in Moab. We know her. She's great. Um, I would definitely rent a Jeep because while you can do trails like Onion Creek, uh, anything you get, anything like iconic that you're going to get into, and I'm talking like Fins and Things, Hell Re Hell's Revenge, you're going to probably destroy that Forester. And I, and I know there's an ongoing discussion among Subaru and Jeep people as to, you know, the real capability of a Subaru. And yes, Subarus are very capable off-road, but once you start talking about Moab off-road, when you're talking about like, you know, crawling over boulders, going down steep steps, 
uh, going into so, st stuff that goes from easy to hard like that. Uh, it's nice to have something that has real off-road um, ability in terms of approach, departure angle, locking diffs, uh, you know, all that good stuff. Um, the biggest issue in Moab is you don't have a low range, and that's going to get you real stuck real quick. Good point. Um, and the other big issue is if you're coming from North Carolina um, and you break your, your Subaru off-road, it's going to be a heck of a lot more expensive to get home. Um, and fix the car than just renting one. So I would I would just rent a, a Wrangler. You'll have more fun. You can go more places. Okay, next question is from James. I have a 2016 Ram 1500 Sport, and I love it, apart from one main thing. The fuel gauge in the readout is terribly inaccurate. Um, I regularly get the low range light on, and it still has four to five gallons left. Left, I should say. So frustrating. I'm not sure if this is something you have seen, and also if it's still an issue on the new model. Um, this has been a big issue um, for us, not in terms of the inaccuracy, but just because we have a teeny, teeny, tiny tank on a Rebel. So I, I, it could be an issue with your truck. It's certainly worth getting it looked at, especially if you're still in a warranty. Yeah, we found that uh, today most manufacturers uh, actually are pretty accurate when it comes to their onboard computers, uh, but it depends by manufacturer. Right. Uh, so, Tommy, you got to get back to class. Yep. And Nathan just walked in, and he just did the first towing review we did with the uh, Gladiator. So oh. why don't we give these guys a preview of what the Gladiator did? So why don't you yeah. head on out of here, and I'll let Nathan come in and take over, and I'll just move over here. Yeah, go for it. All right, come on in, Nathan. See ya. See ya. Uh, so Nathan just came back from uh, our very first towing outing with the Gladiator, where you did... Uh, well, why don't you tell what you did? Well, what we did was we approximated the weight of what it would be to tow, let's say, a proper side-by-side. -side. Oh, cool. Kurt, thank you. Big fan. This is Kurt189. Big fan. Love the Way Out Gladiator. Nothing competes with Jeep. And Kurt sent us uh, an email to ask a TFL truck, and we will send you a hat. Thank you very much for the donation. We appreciate that. Um, oh, going back to so, yeah, sorry. So we came up with a good load. Uh, with one of our newer trailers, and we took it out to do our 100-mile loop. And that MPG loop is quite a challenge for most vehicles. First of all, a little over a mile above sea level in most spots, and because it is at 70 miles per hour constantly, it's a really good way to see whether or not these vehicles get decent mileage, and we found out exactly what the Jeep could do. All right, so let's, let's let them in on the secret. So how much is it supposed to go on the highway non-towing? Uh, up to like 21, 21 yeah. I think, is about what it is. All right, how much did you tow? How much weight? Uh, we towed 4,250 pounds. Tongue weight was uh, 420 pounds. All right, so uh, let's let up guess. Take a, take a guess as to... Uh, we don't want to give them away, give it away before they see the video, though. Oh, they're watching it live. They're watching it live. Don't worry. Yeah, let them guess. So I like can let them guess. Yeah, guess, guys. Go, go ahead and guess. Guess. See, see what kind of fuel economy you got on the highway. I'm going to take a guess. Okay. I'm going to go I'm going to go 12.4. Wrong. <laughs> but a good really good No, not no. No. Is it lower than 12? I will say it's under 12. Oh. You know part of the thing is consider the fact that you're talking about a vehicle that has the aerodynamic qualities of a brick. And not only in terms of its Travis face. said 9. That's closer. Okay. Uh, Chris said 10. You're going the wrong way. Joey's Cleaning Lady said eight. That's about right. Oh, congratulations, Joey's Cleaning Lady. Oh, well, the exact number will be available when the video comes out. All I right. don't want to give it all away. Okay. But yeah, that's that's pretty much around the right area. And here's the thing about that. Normally, what you would do is say, okay, towing MPG, the rule of thumb is it's about half of what your average MPG should be. But this is even less than that. Now, there was a 10 mile per hour wind out there, but that's not a lot. And it's a little cold out there, it's a little damp, but none of that should have really affected the vehicle in a negative way to make it that much less. I was expecting closer to 10 miles per gallon. So when you see the video, you'll see what the final number is, but the point is is that, yeah, it, it's not that frugal. And what are we doing next with it? So it's a part one of two, so mm -hmm. what's the next thing we're doing? The Ike Gauntlet, baby. Hell yeah! And that's going to be fully loaded, so that's not going to be towing some light trailer around, that's going to be towing a heavy trailer up the most difficult obstacle we have for towing. 7,000 pounds, we're gonna take up the Ike Gauntlet, the world's toughest towing test. So Nathan, while I got you here, you know, you were with me and Tommy as we uh, checked out these concepts. What was your favorite and why? Oh, okay, uh, I kinda had two. Okay. Um, my favorite in terms of concepts that you can't buy would be the way out. 
um, because that is almost identical to what I would want uh, if Roman ever gives me a raise. I will buy that Gladiator with a manual transmission and maybe a couple of things not on it, but I love the way it looks. I love those steel wheels. They look awesome. I love the color, that gator green, which will be available, by the way. Uh, before, I mean, you, before you give the other one, yes, uh, there's a question for you. Nathan, would you buy Gladiator and how would you configure yours? Well, there you go. So look at the way out and then take the roof stuff off there so it's a little bit more like a pickup truck. Add a six-speed manual transmission to it, remove the eight-speed, leave everything else on there that the way out has. Those steel wheels, the color, the extra stuff. Oh my God, those extra gas cans that are stuck into the side of the fenders, which I can guarantee you are not going to be Department of Transportation uh, certified. But if they're with, if they have water, which Mark Allen suggested, yes, then it's okay, right? So we just change the color of the cans. So all of that stuff I'd want to do. So that would be what I would buy and modify. Would you, would you get a Rubicon or would you get just a Sport? I would get the Sport. Yeah. I don't need the Rubicon personally. Um, th that's such an overbuilt vehicle and plus it's uh, expensive. So I'd rather pay closer to 50 than 60. Um, but what I would get is the convertible. That's another difference. Um, so without the top, hard top? No, you know, no I, hard I've heard from engineers and everybody that if you're going to get a Gladiator, the convertible is so quiet uh, that it doesn't let a lot of highway noise in, so it's a good option. We drove one. The convertible, it comes as a convertible. It you does. have to pay extra for, for the, for, for the, the hard top. top yeah. And we actually have a thing where we lifted a hard top off, by the way, which is a video that is coming up in the very near jo future. Joey's Cleaning Lady says, and you'll appreciate this in those canisters, gin and tonic. Yes, exactly, which is actually in another concept, which was an awesome concept. Um, but, uh, yeah, so the thing is, is that uh, with the convertible roof, we did drive a convertible in high, high winds, Roman and I, and we could still hear the wind pretty good. I mean, we didn't have to yell, and the roofs are much bigger, better than they used to be. But from what I've been told, especially if you just open the back part of the curtain and just keep the regular overhang over and everything else, that it works really well. I'll have to find out on my own. All right, so what, you said oh, what yeah. is it? Yeah. So the other concept yeah. is something that you can buy, and that's the gravity concept. And what I really liked about that is, that, yes, the fact is everything on that, with the exception of a couple stickers, is available through a Jeep Performance Parts, and you can basically build that thing right now. And in terms of drive, because I drove all of these. I drove every single one of these. Um, and how did you break the uh, M715? I, okay, I didn't <laughs> break it. <laughs> It broke while I was driving it. Oh, in other words, you broke it. No, there's a difference. You see, it wasn't me being a bad guy and, and doing something irresponsible to break it. I turned the wheel to the left really hard to get around an obstacle, and the uh, power steering hose let loose. And frankly, that wasn't great. Did it squirt you with power steering? No, fluid? but it lost all of its power steering. So you got to imagine trying to drive that thing with no power steering. Uh, with, with, with the system that's used to power steering meant that I was literally doing this trying to keep it going straight. You will see in the video, I mean, I literally am doing this just trying to keep it going straight down this uh, dirt path. Um, but yeah, the clamps came off and that's what happened. It wasn't me, it was the vehicle. I just was there at the wrong time. All right. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to go with that. And, uh, everybody, and you know, people were so pissed off because we, get, we came back and then all these other journalists were waiting. And Woody they had Chuck to, says, too much hot sauce on that turn, Nathan. I, I was going like three miles per hour. I was literally letting it so idle. So I'm, I'm sitting there flying the drone, right? I'm flying the drone, getting the drone shots, and then all of a sudden he goes, vroom, vroom. I look up and I'm like, I hope that's Nathan, and of course it was. Yeah, okay, well, I had to test out the accelerator, too. That's the other part that's important. Look, if they're going to give you a vehicle that has a Hellcrate engine in it and you don't accelerate a little bit, then there's something wrong with you. So there were people before us who drove it, and they literally just babied it around. They never even touched the accelerator. So I had to do something. Of course. Now, if I had actually put my foot down, I would have been a greasy spot on one of the walls of, in an area that the, uh, yeah, it would have been bad. So I didn't do that, but I did give it a little bit of beans, as Roman likes to say. And yeah, wow, it was an amazing sound. Incredible. So, so we're putting out a lot of Gladiator videos right now. Tons. And people are like, oh, you guys are paid by FCA, right? But that's not the reason we're putting out a lot of Gladiator. Nobody's paying us. Uh, Believe me. Yeah, no, I, I wish. Beef jerky not. pays us a little bit. We actually, our editorial um, 
our editorial guideline says we don't take money from manufacturers, so. No, we do special projects from time to time, but they're basically, that's that's as far as it goes. Yeah, but the reason we're putting out a lot of Gladiator videos is because... There's a lot of Gladiator stuff out there right you're now. You're interested in it, it's brand new, you know, three months ago or four months ago, we were doing a lot of Ranger stuff. Oh my God, and then we were then, oh, you guys worked for Ford, yeah, how, much, how much does Chevy, you know, and then, and then Chevy stuff. When we were doing the Bison early on, how much does Chevy and, pay and, you? And, and I promise you, Nathan, in a couple of months when the new heavy duty uh, uh, Chevys come out, we'll be mm. doing a lot of heavy duty we'll Chevys. We'll be doing a ton of yeah. that as well. Yeah, that's yeah. that's that's what that's news is from new, right? That's what it's about. Exactly. And the thing is, if we could, if we were big enough to take everything and stack them so we could divide everything equally, we would. But unfortunately, we're a small little outfit, so we just grab what we can and put it out there for you guys. Yeah, you know, uh, we try to kind of watch what you com what your comments are and then we try to address them so one of the comments for instance me and Tommy did a video where we pointed out the features and the um, uh, Easter eggs in the new uh, gladiator right right and everybody was like hey you know that's a sixty thousand dollar truck uh, maybe you should talk about that and so today on this channel we did a video showing what other vehicles you could buy for 60k because of basically the comments that you had so we listen and we try to you know create the videos that you want and by the way there's a lot of cool trucks you can buy including a raptor dude yeah you can get the base raptor sort of kind of although good luck anyone for 60. i think you'd be lucky to get it's, one for like 62. they started 55 but the second you put one package on one package is all it takes and then you're well over 60 i would imagine but you could get you know you could get like a trail boss uh, our friends at ryan's um uh, auto plaza Johnson's Auto Plaza, <laughs> Ryan is the guy who runs it. Um, they have um, a um, Trailhawk, no, no, I'm sorry, uh, um, a Silverado, what's the name of it? Trail Boss? Yeah, Trail Boss, thank you, uh, for 50K. You know, if, if they guy. had an AT4 for 50K, yeah. then I would seriously throw away my kid's college fund and think about it, but that's not the AT4. No, no, they also are discounting, uh, oh, by the way, Oh. Nightwing 4 says, have you guys heard anything about the new, more powerful engine for the Ram 1500? Well, other than the um, the T-Rex the thingy or whatever that is, no. TRX. TRX. Yeah. I said T-Rex. Yeah. Um, Boy, we're getting old, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just came off this massive drive and I just... Um, no, I mean, that's the only one we've heard about and that's supposed to be basically a Hellcat engine. Um, we... Now, we do know that, at least temporarily, they've uh, slowed down on their deliveries of the um, e-torque system. Yeah, because of us, I think. <laughs> I think <we laughs> because of our MPG mileage that, whoops, and of you guys. See, they don't pay us because we just so, lost them a lot of money. So anyway, you know, uh, the point of that video basically was the question, and it's in the thumbnail. Mm -hmm. Whoa, Billy Walsh, thank you, Billy, 199, appreciate it, dude. Thanks, Bill. Uh, the point of the question was, uh, is the Gladiator overpriced? I mean, you know, you could, you could, our RAM, the long-term RAM that we have, 1500 Rebel, costs less than a Rubicon Gladiator that we have. A Rubicon, but just uh, Grim Reaper just asked if I would buy an F-150 or a uh, Gladiator. Now, the Gladiator suits me because, first of all, I don't haul a lot, I don't tow a lot, but I do haul a little, I do tow a little. Yeah, ass. Yes, and I can take the top off. Now, I know the image of Nathan topless is not a great one, but me driving topless is awesome. Without having hair, it's the closest I can have you know, to that feeling. But more importantly, it's an awesome, fun truck and has a manual transmission. I love manual transmissions. Ford F-150, they don't offer them. Hell, they don't even offer them on the uh, Ford Ranger, which is a great truck, but it doesn't have a manual transmission. So, hmm. Anyway, I was going to say that um, you're right, uh, but uh, at the Auto Plaza, they now have... Uh, Wranglers that mm -hmm. are 2018s that are six thousand dollars off. Now that is something. Three thousand dollars. That's off. really compelling because I just found out that she who must be obeyed my is wife. Your wife, yeah. Um, she really likes Wranglers, and if she starts hearing about stuff like that, her ears kind of perk up. I've noticed like when we're driving, she goes, "Oh look, there's a Wrangler." I'm thinking, why? Why did you even mention? Oh. You know what I mean? So that might be something I might have to look into, which means no Gladiator for Nathan in the near future. Smith Jones says he just did a search of Auto Trader and saw lots of Raptors for under 60. Are those new or are those uh, pre-owned, yeah, used? And, yeah, and, and double check on what you're looking at, and they may be also lease returns. Um, it's entirely possible that, yes, online you might be able to find those prices, but realistically a lot of those places do up charges like you cannot believe. So yeah, here's the thing, Nathan. Uh, as a Jeep truck, right, the Gladiator will and is worth what they're asking for. Because if you want a Jeep truck, uh, and if you want a convertible truck, there's only one truck you can buy, and that's a Gladiator. However, yeah. as a mid-sized truck, 
you know, not as a Jeep, but as a mid-sized truck, not as a Jeep truck, then you're competing with Tacomas and, of course, Rangers. And the Colorado. And the Colorado and the Frontier. And now you're probably on thin ice. You are. And there are a couple things to keep in mind. First of all, we did a video, a really good one, I thought, where we compared the Bison off-road, that's the Chevy Colorado ZR2 Bison, against the Gladiator, the very same Gladiator we have. And though, you know, it wasn't a super hard off-road area, it was a medium hard off-road area, but it showed us a lot of things about the two vehicles that were different. And the Bison had the diesel engine, which off-road in this case was superior because there was no acceleration needed. Um, very good video to watch, it's on TFL truck, and it really illustrates the big differences between those vehicles off-road. That's where the Gladiator shines, but it still had some weak points there, right? So all of a sudden, Things become more equal and then less equal when you start looking at what the other vehicles can do on road. All right, last question from oh, yeah, yeah. Sean Du. The real question is, Nathan, would you take a Gladiator or a Power Wagon? And I'm going to make it even harder because you can get a Power Wagon for less money than a Gladiator. A lot less money. You can get a 2018 for oh, almost 50 or less K, dude. So now you're 10K under the cost of a Gladiator and you can have your beloved Power Wagon. So... Ooh, that's a tough one. This hurts so much. You know what? Don't answer it. Let's let's come back tomorrow uh, and continue uh, our live show, and we'll answer that tomorrow. <laughs> Good. Now I have all night to sweat this, and that's then right. come out with with exactly why I wouldn't, why I wouldn't. Fair enough. Okay. Well, we'll continue tomorrow on this. Well, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. Remember, uh, if you're looking for any cool truck content. Go to TFL Truck, any cool car content, go to TFL Car. And then tomorrow on Truck, we're actually putting up a lot more videos. We only do three a week, but because of the auto show and because of the Easter Jeep Safari, we just had a lot more work and videos that we were able to put up. Uh, so tomorrow, we're putting up a really cool video showing all the cool features of the Rivian. That's right. Andre kicked ass at this auto show. He covered so much, so don't forget to watch. It's, it's way cool, dude. There's so really cool stuff in that truck. Yeah. You know it's got four motors, one in each wheel? One in each wheel, and, I mean, the, the potential of that vehicle off-road is pretty extreme, so I'm dying to get my hands on one. Yep, so check out that video. It'll be up on TFL Truck tomorrow. Once again, thanks for watching, guys, and I think i got to play us out of here, except I, where did Tommy do with the music? Where is our music? Here it is. Here's our music. Let's play some music, Nathan. Okay. Ooh. Oh, that's not good. Sounds, this is what, sounds like somebody farting. No, this is not. Tommy's in college still. He's a college <laughs> kid. They hacky sack and boom wait, boxes. Wait, here comes. Here comes. Here comes. There we go. Sorry, guys. Tommy's music. I know you'd rather have Ozzy. <laughs> yeah. Or Rush. Or Rush. Or Van Halen. Or any number of, uh, yeah.